Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Let's now look at uh, what happens to the gases that are flowing downstream of the combustion wave if the wave happens to be a deflagration wave or a detonation wave. What we have seen so far is uh, if you have a deflagration wave it is an expansion wave and so uh, you, you have the reactants react into products and the product gases downstream of the wave. Um, will have the pressure decrease a little bit and uh, density decrease and they, they would get accelerated and uh, if the acceleration is just only mild then the deflagration wave of course propagates uh, at a subsonic speed relative to still reactants and the uh, products will also be accelerating only up to subsonic speeds but if it is a Chapman Juge deflagration it can get accelerated all the way up to sonic velocity or if it is a strong um, deflagration it can get accelerated all the way up to supersonic velocities which of course we have been saying is forbidden by the second law. On the, on the other hand if you now look at the upper branch of the Hugonio curve um, uh, <coughs> we, we have a detonation wave that propagates at supersonic speeds relative to still reactants and the products go through a compression and uh, uh, that means they are uh, uh, they, they are having a pressure rise and a density rise and then they get decelerated and for a weak de 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 detonation they do not get decelerated significantly. So the product uh, velocities still turn out to be supersonic whereas for Chapman Juge detonation it is turning out to be uh, sonic and for strong detonation it gets decelerated all the way down to subsonic speeds this is what we have uh, noticed. What we want to now uh, look at is what is the direction of this velocity of the downstream gases. What does that mean right. So we have this wave uh, that, that we wanted to keep and then we, we have been thinking about a wave fixed coordinate system in which the wave is like this and then the gases are coming in the reactants are coming in and the products are moving. So we thought the directions are all fixed right. All right, but then keep in mind that uh, if you now allow for a um, lab fixed coordinate system in which you have still reactants and then you want to have the wave move right that means you want to now subtract out the incoming velocity from the entire flow field and now start looking at whether the reactants are going to still be going like this or going like this in other words sorry products. The pro, so the reactants are still and the wave is moving and we now subtract the reactant velocity from the product velocity as well and then we want to find out whether the uh, products are going to be going like this or going like that or still in other words we want to know whether the products are going to actually follow the wave or go away from the wave right. So that is that is what we want to do now. And let us see how to do this. So, downstream velocity uh, at non CJ points, uh, whatever we do actually also applies to see the CJ points as well. Uh, it is just that when you say non CJ points it is lot more general when compared to what we have done before which is to look at the Mach number uh, downstream Mach number at the CJ points from where we just generalize saying that weak detonations will have supersonic downstream velocities strong detonations will have subsonic downstream velocities and so forth by just noting that uh, the CJ detonation or deflagration will have sonic downstream Mach numbers but here what we are trying to do is to de determine the direction of this velocity relative to the wave uh, for any point any point not just a CJ point. So this, this is applicable to non CJ points as well. So let us now look at the detonation branch 
So in the detonation branch, so in, in the detonation branch of the Higonio curve. Right, um, we have one over rho infinity is less than one over rho naught. Right, therefore, we have uh, u infinity minus u naught equals m dot times one over rho infinity minus one over rho naught. You know how to get this, um, which is uh, less than zero. Which which implies that u infinity is u less than u naught. This is this is no news. We know that the downstream velocity is going to be less than the upstream velocity because the flow is getting decelerated. But that is in a lab fixed coordinate. Sorry, a flame flame fixed coordinate system or a wave fixed coordinate system. So if you now have a wave that is fixed in a coordinate system and you had a u naught like this and u infinity like this this is what is the story right but if you now look at this so this is wave fixed right but if you now have something like a lab fixed coordinate system where you are uh, you are saying let us now have the wave move uh, with the velocity v wave okay and we now suppose that your reactant velocity is in this coordinate system designated as v naught and suppose let us suppose that let us say it is set to 0 that means we are having still reactants right and in our notation let us now say that we want to have our v infinity follow the wave right that is simply saying I want to subtract u naught from this and if I were to now subtract u naught from here it is going to become 0 that is what I am going to get here if I now subtract u naught from here is it, the question is is it the, is the arrow going to flip or not okay is it going to continue to be this way or not okay. That means we want to basically find out whether v infinity minus u naught is going to be positive or negative. That's exactly what we are looking for. Okay, assuming though that this v infinity is uh, uh, going to be in this direction. So let us now do the coordinate transformation. So v naught is equal to uh, v wave minus uh, u naught and. Uh, v infinity equals v wave minus u infinity right. So essentially now the v wave, wave is now thrown upon this 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 uh, uh, picture therefore whatever we are actually now beginning to see here for the velocity is going to be uh, v wave subtracted uh, velocities therefore now if you have still reactant so this is the lab fixed. coordinate system um, for still reactants right v not equal to 0 so just in case you when we you have been wondering how, how come we have a v not yes we will try to subs we will now try to set it to 0 uh, to indicate that we have uh, still reactants which means that our v wave is equal to u naught. Now notice this carefully we can say v wave is equal to u naught because of the way the arrows are marked. If you now take your arrow for the v wave to be rightward that is when it is equal to u naught with the u naught actually marked this way all right that is basically say that the v wave exactly opposes u naught in the wave fixed coordinate system therefore your v wave is becoming stationary right. So 
this is having the directions taken for these two things embedded in, in, in it when you now say V wave is equal to U. All right. If you now say that then then V infinity V infinity you can now plug V infinity is taking the direction of V infinity to be uh, following the wave if you now do that then V wave can be substituted as U naught and you can now get U naught minus U infinity right but what did we what did we notice for U naught minus U infinity U, uh, U naught is greater than U infinity which is now greater than 0 right so so u naught minus u infinity is greater than 0 so if you now have u naught minus u infinity greater than 0 for v infinity if v infinity is greater than 0 with the direction taken this way then that that that, that means this arrow arrow sign is correct right so you have a positive quantity for arrow sign going uh, towards the wave which simply means that uh, the burn gases behind the detonation wave will follow the detonation wave right so this implies that uh, the burn burn gases burn gases behind the detonation wave follow follow the wave right but what but but when you now try to say the, the way the, the burn gases are going to follow the wave will they catch up with the wave will they go past the wave that does not make sense at least if, if 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 they were to be able to go past the wave, then they will become reactants. <laughs> but but, but they are supposed to be products, so we we better want them to actually kind of follow the wave, rather faithfully, right? But but what's going to happen in reality? So the question is, uh, then if you now say, V wave is equal to, so what do we have for the V wave? V wave is equal to U infinity plus V infinity right so if you now use this one here you can find that we get V wave is basically V infinity plus U infinity and uh, we now find that both U, both your U infinity and V infinity the way they are defined in these two uh, uh, coordinate systems both of them are positive right so this implies that uh, V wave will obviously be greater than V infinity. And how did we define the V wave? V wave and the V infinity are in the same direction, right? Since V wave is greater than V infinity, it follows that the the burn gases will never be able to catch up with the wave. The wave is going to travel faster than the burn gases, right? So this implies that uh, the burn gases, although traveling in the same direction as the wave can never catch up with the wave right. This is true even when you now have a weak detonation where the, the product gases are travelling at supersonic speeds. They travel at supersonic speeds that are still less than the supersonic speed at which the wave travels okay. Now when I say that you got to be a little bit careful because when you say supersonic or subsonic it is it is based on the Mach number and the Mach number is the way we are actually trying to deal with 
for the upstream Mach number and the downstream Mach number are relative to their respective temperatures and in, in all these cases the upstream temperature is lower than the downstream temperature okay. So the downstream Mach number always would look like it's, it, it can be lower okay it does not mean that the velocities are lower but what we are actually finding out in this is the velocity is lower than the wave velocity okay therefore it is going to um, it is not going to be able to catch up it follows but it cannot catch up all right. What happens when you now have a deflagration so in the the deflagration uh, branch of the Hugonio of the Hugonio curve we have One over rho infinity minus one over rho naught, right? So where is the one over rho infinity? One over rho infinity is uh, on the right side when you get the solution for the lower branch uh, when compared to one over rho naught. So that's actually greater than zero. Uh, therefore, if you now have one over rho infinity minus one over rho naught is greater than zero, then u infinity minus u naught. equals m dot 1 over rho infinity minus 1 over rho naught is greater than 0 right. So u infinity is greater than u naught that is no news in the wave fixed coordinate system we know, we know that the flow the, the product flow is getting accelerated when compared to the reactants. But now you look look at what the what the consequence is uh, when you now have the lab fixed coordinate system. If you now say u infinity is greater than u naught, and then go back here and look at what happens to v infinity, right? So v infinity is equal to u naught minus u infinity. That's coming out of the coordinate transformation, regardless of the actual disparity between uh, u infinity and v or u, uh, u, u naught. Okay. And uh, so all the all the all this is this is for a general wave, this is for a general wave with still reactants. This is for a general wave. We have not said that it's it's a it's a detonation at that point. It's only when you say greater than zero we have invoked this. That's for a detonation, but it turns out to be this for a deflagration. If you now plug it in here, you find that then v infinity equal to u naught minus u infinity what do you get u infinity minus minus u uh, sorry u infinity is greater than u naught therefore u naught minus u infinity is now going to be less than 0 that means v infinity is negative v infinity being negative the way the arrow is taken this way means that it is going to the arrow is going to get flipped right. So this implies that the burn gases. The burn gases behind the deflagration wave flow away from the wave, away from the wave in the opposite direction. So since the gases are going to go away from the wave we do not have to worry about what their speed is relative to the wave speed because they are not never going to get never going to catch up right. So let us not even do the extra thing that we did for the detonation uh, so we do not have to worry about whether they are going to catch up or not they simply go away. So that means in reality what happens is if you now have a deflagration that is propagating this way. Uh, in still reactants as soon as the reactants react you now have gases flow away in this direction if the wave is going like this simply because they are getting accelerated and you had still reactants and you now have a pressure decrease and a density decrease 
so it is an expansion that is going on with an acceleration so the velocity that is accrued because of this tends to flow away from this region right uh, that is what you get for a deflagration. Now we will see a couple of uh, other uh, thermodynamic properties Bef yes. No, this is this is basically based on the way we have actually accounted for these directions for the wave, and the. Uh, uh, in fact, what we should what, what I should say is we are also assuming a v naught like this. That's that's uh, that's how you can get this coordinate transformation going. But of course, we set v naught equal to zero uh, because we want to consider still reactants, and from where we get v v, v wave is equal to u naught. But I wanted to point out previously that v wave is assumed to be like this and u naught is assumed to be like this that is how we got this transformation to be like this and uh, this way now, yes and the wave is moving this way correct. So when I put the relative velocity of the products it would become vw plus whatever. True then what happens is see why, why would you want to do that so you, you would want to do if, if you want to now factor in the relative velocity of the products relative to the wave then you are going back to the wave fixed coordinate system right. If you what is meant by relative velocity relative to what relative to what yeah relative to the wave. So if you now want to actually locate your velocities relative to the wave you are going to your wave, wave fixed coordinate system unless unless you are now trying to do well maybe maybe not maybe, maybe what you are saying is uh, different from what I am saying because when I when I am in a wave fixed coordinate system I am actually counting my reactant velocity relative to the wave okay. When I am in a lap fixed coordinate system I am just letting the wave propagate in, in it primarily still reactants but it does not have to be still okay. Uh, but if, if, if I am counting for a flow direction I would, I would count it like this if the flow were actually approaching the wave like this in a in a wave uh, in a lap fixed coordinate system I would have to reckon v naught to be negative in, in the way, we, the way I am doing this. Uh, what you are telling me is once I actually find out what my actual v infinity is is it possible for me to look at that velocity relative to the wave that means we are we are now trying to look for making this still if that is if that is if that is what I understand huh. I am saying like the equation what we have taken is for v infinity it's V W minus U infinity. V infinity is V what? V infinity equation is V W minus U infinity. Okay. That's because I am taking the direction like this. Yes. Of V infinity. But if I take the direction itself like this, then the relative velocity would become V W plus U infinity. So the equation there itself changes. So this process. Okay. The, the, if you were to take your V infinity direction to be like this you should get v infinity to be positive yeah. that's that, that that's what you should expect yeah. all right which which would which would be basically say the same thing all right so i mean you you can work that out uh maybe what you what you do is uh you assume that v naught is going to be positive in this direction v infinity is going to be positive in that direction you should be able to show that if you were to actually make v naught equal to 0 right then v infinity becomes negative for detonation wave and it is it's positive for deflagration wave that will that will simply make this different you would you would now write you, you would now say that v naught is equal to u infinity minus v w and uh, v infinity is equal to u infinity minus v w all right that is how you will actually get these signs flip you should get the same thing right the, the question is all about being consistent about your about um, these transformations based on the direction that you have assumed okay. So uh, I, I guess I guess that would be a little bit more straightforward maybe uh, if you were to assume the wave to go like this and still assume the reactants to go like this and the products to go like that it is it is probably a lot straightforward to do the transformation right and all you have to do then is to show that v infinity is negative in the case of de detonations and remains positive in the case of de deflagrations. So that you, you have to show the opposite okay maybe maybe for the exam right so yeah.
uh, but 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 it, it should it should be the same. All right, uh, let's just uh, go through a couple of quick uh, thermodynamic properties, other than what we have discussed so far. Uh, before I come back to uh, some some realistic well, realistic uh, depictions of these waves and see what happens. So first thing I would like to point out is uh, uh, temperature. Temperature behind the waves, right? Um, T infinity is greater than T naught always uh, for Q greater than zero. Uh, what you can show is uh, show if uh, the mean molecular weights. Of uh, of the of the reactants and products um, are assumed to be equal. That is uh, one over. Sigma i equals one to n y i infinity divided by w i equals one over sigma i equals one to n y i naught divided by w i equal to w bar. Then uh, Then the temperature ratio, the temperature ratio T infinity by T naught equals P infinity by rho infinity divided by uh, P naught divided by rho naught is greater than one for uh, at CJ points. That, that is to say you can show this at C j points uh, considering the simplifying assumption that the mean molecular weight of the reactant and product gases are equal but that is that's just, that, that's just a mathematical exercise that you can go through. The second thing that I would like to uh, point out is how the entropy varies uh, this is something that we have not talked about at all but it is interesting to talk about entropy variation. Entropy variation along the Hugonio right so maybe we have these underlying to distinguish them. So it can be shown that and it is not, not very difficult to show I will show you I will tell you how to show this um, it can be shown that the entropy is uh, a minimum at uh, UCJ. U C J and uh, maximum at L C J. So that's basically again looking at the C J points because they are more amenable to uh, mathematical manipulation, uh, given that you can match the slopes of the Rayleigh and the Higonio and get coordinates and so on. Um, and then, how do you show this? Okay, so I'm not going to show this, but you you can show question is how do you show this um, well it is rather straightforward what you have to do is uh, you see that the Hugonio curve um, is, is uh, having P infinity on the vertical axis and 1 over rho infinity on the horizontal axis so it is as if 1 over rho infinity is your independent variable and P infinity is your dependent variable right. 
So what you what, what is suggested is you now try to express your entropy as a function of 1 over rho infinity as a independent variable still and if you do that and then of course the way you do this is you now assume a reversible uh, hypothetical reversible reaction that can prevail between the end states and um, then use like uh, TD T infinity DS infinity equal to uh, in the first law of thermodynamics and uh, <coughs> so if you now do that then you get a expression for entropy uh, at the end state as a function of uh, 1 over rho infinity and use that expression to differentiate uh, this entropy with respect to 1 over rho infinity at the CJ point note that I am not saying which CJ point because whether it is maximum or minimum you are going to have the derivative equal to 0 so you should be able to show this this is relatively easier when compared to the next step which is you have to now show whether it is maximum or minimum right. So what you will be able to show is with, with d squared s infinity divided by d 1 over rho infinity squared um, at u c j as greater than 0 and uh, d squared s infinity divided by d 1 over rho infinity squared as less uh, at l c j as less than 0 right. So what is happening what you will find is I am just running out of space there let me use this panel to uh, depict what is going on. So if you now think about uh, the way I said that is you have your 1 over rho infinity as your independent variable and you plot your s infinity as a dependent variable question is how does it look like okay. Now this is good to do because the 1 over rho infinity is going to be the same in the Hugonio as well as here and we know what happens when you now have uh, um, the 1 over rho infinity vary about its origin the origin of the Hugonio of course is 1 over rho naught right and then the 1 over rho infinity varies on either side um, 1 over rho infinity increases in the um, deflagration the lower branch and uh, 1 over infinity decreases in the uh, upper branch for the detonation but keep in mind that uh, uh, there is a there is a region here which belongs to the first quadrant in the Hugonio which is not covered right that means 1 over rho infinity goes from 1 over rho naught as the initial condition to a value uh, that it jumps to a value that is where the Hugonio cuts the x axis passing through the origin right because above this you have the first quadrant in the Hugonio plot uh, which is forbidden and therefore you will you will you will uh, you will find that you now have uh, you, you will now have uh, a curve that goes like that and this is where your uh, LCJ is and uh, then you have uh, over here a curve that looks like this. Uh, which is where you now have your UCJ right. So what we are basically saying is this is uh, your um, region 1 this is region 2 this is region 3 this is region 4. Um, so that that means this is strong detonate detonation uh, you have CJ CJ detonation this is weak D 
detonation uh, we have uh, weak deflagration and of course we have uh, CJ deflagration um, then we have a strong deflagration right then the let then let us think about what really happens in actual practice okay what we have seen so far is something kind of trivial we have assumed that we can treat whatever whatever happens inside the wave as a black box and then just do balances across as if they just jump but we need still to conserve mass momentum energy and so forth and we have now come upon a lot of facts like we should now be able to say that there are two kinds of waves that are completely apart one goes as deflagration subsonic and another one is detonation and so on and then we further looked at uh, uh, upstream and downstream conditions to point out that this is subsonic that is supersonic then you have strong weak and all those things right. Um, but did we ever care about whether this really happens in reality okay. So um, realistic existence of these waves of uh, of the different waves the first thing is strong detonation what you will find is uh, strong detonations are not very easily observed okay so seldom seldom observed and uh, why so because it is a strong detonation that means you have to have a large compression and you have to make sure that the gases are decelerated down to subsonic speeds from a supersonically propagating wave and you have to have large pressures there and maintained okay. So invariably the way detonations typically happen is if you now have a reactant gas in a confined region and you and, and they got ignited at the confined end and you now have a wave that is beginning to propagate you now have a confined region where the pressure can build up and stay right and once you can have this pressure build up then you have a transition to detonation wave for what you what you what you are igniting and you now have a detonation wave but the moment the detonation wave begins to propagate this this space is vacated right so you cannot really have the pressure hold on until you are able to actually have this confinement follow the wave right. So this is what is called as a overdriven shock tube so that means you have to have like a piston that runs along with the wave and keeps this confinement as it is in order to be able to preserve the uh, very high pressure that is being obtained with the strong detonation. So um, it requires a special uh, special experimental arrangement <coughs> requires arrangement uh, what is called as overdriving the shock. Now CJ detonation on the other hand is always observed that means whenever you have a detonation wave there is there is a very high chance that it is always a CJ detonation so always observed. In fact in, in the in the experiment that I just discussed if you do not have this overdriving you have this detonation wave right and you start out with a strong detonation let us say because we had the confinement and keep in mind what happens with the strong detonation wave you now have a subsonic flow downstream right and you now have the pressure pulses that go and get reflected from this and begin to come back and hit the uh, wave because 
this is a subsonic flow and the pressure pulses can actually pro propagate faster than the, 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 the uh, uh, product flow. Product is actually beginning to follow but at subsonic speeds and it is not going to catch up but it can allow for the uh, waves to go uh, dis the pressure disturbances that are coming from the other side can actually pass through this because it, this is subsonic. Typically what then happens is you now have an expansion fan uh, should not say fan if you, get, you should say expansion wave because we are basically looking one dimensional. So you now have this wave that go like this and then there is a pressure build up and that also propagates so you have an expansion region that is get, that, that's getting created which can propagate through this and then go and try to weaken the wave all right. When that happens progressively this wave is getting weakened down to CJ level at which point the the, the products are beginning to actually go at sonic speed right. So once the products are going, to going at sonic speed the, the, the rarefaction wave that we talked about can never really go past them right. They can, they can go only at the speed of the, the products and not really reach the wave at all and therefore you now stop at a CJ. So any strong detonation that, that has been created will always tend towards the CJ detonation pretty soon and there is a reason why you will always um, um, find a CJ detonation unless you took this uh, arrangement in order to preserve the strong detonation right. So if you did not do any such arrangement you are going to be uh, getting a uh, CJ detonation. Third weak detonation. Now this is also seldom observed here what happens is you are having the react the product gases travel at supersonic speeds while it is while it is trying to follow the wave and if you want to have supersonic speeds at which the products are traveling you, are, you have to have chemical reactions that are happening in the wave happen so fast that they, 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 they are able to actually produce products that can travel so, so, so fast. So this really means that you have to have chemical reactions that happen very fast so you need to have very special mixtures that have, have extremely fast kinetics. So require special reactant mixer, mi mixtures. that have extremely fast kinetics fast when compared to the flow velocities of the products so that you will get products otherwise you will still have reactions happening while you are still expecting products to happen the products are not happening because the reactions are taking slow or so taking time to happen. So that is about uh, we the detonations let us now see what happens to the deflagrations um, should talk about weak deflagration yeah, yeah. Weak sorry it is not really stopped by anything no, it's weak what that is only for the react that, that, that is only for the infinity infinity uh, condition. At 1 by rho and not I have S0. Uh -huh. Then whatever I get in this plot is below the value of true that is correct. So it should not happen at all. No that is not true. Entropy is decreasing only for the system because the system is being worked upon when, when, when you have a compression wave what you really want to be looking for is the, the entropy for what is actually causing the uh, work to be done as well. So it is the, the entropy of the universe that actually ultimately increases it does not have it does not mean that if, if, if you have a particular system entropy cannot uh, decrease. If you do work on a system then entropy can decrease but who is doing the work on the system will have a corresponding entropy increase which will be greater than the entropy decrease that, that you find in the system because it is a compression you will have a 
entropy decrease because work is being done on the system all right so that that's for another day so according to what you say none, none, none of this can happen right well you have to start from here this is your starting point so if you were somewhere here you are still low right that's not true so uh, talking about weak weak deflagration always observed right here in fact if you now go back and look at your Hugonio and this is the origin and let us say that is a CJ point what you are talking about is somewhere that is like very very close to the, the, the uh, original value that means if you this is your P naught and this is your P infinity P infinity is just about little less than P naught. So most of your weak deflagration is happening very close to the, the original P naught and uh, very far away from the LCJ. Okay, in other words you do not even go all the way somewhere here you are very close there that is mostly what happens you are typically talking about open systems and in open systems you have almost like a constant pressure process it is only very close to the flame it is possible to have this acceleration uh, and this expansion therefore the pressure decreases a little bit not a whole lot right and that is exactly what gives you a weak deflagration. Correspondingly if you are now thinking about a CJ deflagration you simply have to say not observed this is primarily coming from the pneumatics that means if you just put the numbers in you will find that you cannot get the pressure to decrease significantly at all uh, for the downstream case to, to be able to get down to a CJ level right and when you now finally talk about a strong deflagration all you have to say is not possible forbidden by second law this is something that we have been talking about uh, so in reality in the CJ uh, in the Higonio line we are pretty much confined to a region that is very close to where we started for the P naught. Uh, and uh, you do not even go all the way to the CJ cannot really go past it at all in, in, in reality okay. So most of your deflagrations are extremely weak deflagrations that is the way I, I, I would put it. So let us finally give some numbers um, on what these changes are like. So if you now look at uh, detonation on the one hand deflagration on the other hand uh, what are our m naughts it is of the order of about 5 to 10 here it is of the order of about 0.001 to about 0.03 there are about 2 orders magnitude variation but they are very very small u infinity over u naught how does the deceleration or the acceleration happen this is about 0 0.4 to 0 0.7 deceleration here it is about 4 to 6 you can work this out if you assume constant pressure you can work this out to be about 4 to 6 based on the temperature change uh, this is acceleration p infinity over p naught this is about look at this number 13 to 55 compression this is about point 98 there is about 98 percent pressure recovery there so that is slight expansion and this high pressure jump across the detonation wave 
is what causes all the damage in, in detonations okay um, T infinity over T naught is about 8 to 21 that is heat addition it is only slightly less over here it is about 4 to 16 also heat addition in both cases we are actually adding heat and finally look at rho infinity over rho naught you have about 1.7 to 2.6 and uh, over here it is about 0 0.06 to about 0 0.25 that is about it. So you get, a, you get the picture on what do, you, what do you get for these detonation or deflagration waves in summary you typically are looking at a CJ detonation or a weak deflagration when you are looking at these numbers.